it is important that you should know what to do when your child gets a middle ear infection. Ear infections are common in kids and it happens when viruses or bacteria gets into the middle ear, which is the space behind the eardrum. When infected, the middle ear fills up with pus and this pus can push on the eardrum causing pain. In this video, we will talk about the signs of middle ear infections or otitis media. We will also talk about why are kids prone to get ear infections and how is it diagnosed and treated by doctors and what ways can you do to prevent this. Hey, I'm Dr. Christine Albaquet. I'm a board certified pediatrician. And my mission is to help moms and dads deal with child health problems to raise happy and healthy kids. <coughs> Middle ear infection or otitis media. What are the signs that your kiddo has otitis media? Well, the most common sign is ear pain and it might be accompanied by fever. Also, there is trouble eating or chewing or drinking. Uh, kids might also complain of trouble sleeping because of uh, pressure on the ear when lying down. Older kids commonly complain about ear pain, but in younger kids, signs include just being fuzzier than usual or crying a lot, and they can also tug on their ears. How do you get ear infections? Well, middle ear infections happens because of swelling in one or both of the eustachian tubes. The eustachian tube is the tube that connects the middle ear to the back of the throat and mucus drains uh, fluid from the middle ear to the back of the throat. When you get a cold, have allergies, reflux, or a throat infection, this can induce swelling and therefore would block drainage of the mucus. When this happens, uh, viruses and bacteria can infect and form pus. So why are kids prone to get middle ear infections compared to adults? This is because in kids, their eustachian tubes are shorter and more horizontal, which makes it easier for the viruses and bacteria to get into the middle ear. And also, their tubes are narrower, so it's easier to get blocked. Kids also have large adenoids, which are structures found at the back of the throat, and it interferes with the opening of the eustachian tubes. Other risk factors for having ear infections include secondhand smoke exposure, also being around other kids, bottle feeding, and most of this happens during winter time when there are a lot of people having upper respiratory infections or the colds. How long does ear infections last? Well, the good news is it usually lasts for two to three days, even without specific treatment. So how is it diagnosed and treated? Does your child need antibiotics? What are the ways to prevent it? Will it affect your child's hearing? And when should you worry and call the doctor? But before we go to that, do you have a newborn baby? Or you're expecting a baby? How much better life can be when things are under your control upon baby's arrival? Where you feel confident about your breastfeeding? Where you know when to worry and call the doctor? When you know how to deal with a crying, fuzzy baby? where you know how to take care of yourself and how to deal with postpartum depression. Well, I have developed an online training video series known as the 5 Newborn Care Strategies. You can get it at the comfort of your home. Do check that out in the description section. So how is ear infection diagnosed? Well, your doctor would ask for your child's symptoms and do a physical examination of your child's ear using an otoscope. Treatment, well, this would depend on several things and your doctor would check for the type of ear infection and how severe it is. How often does your child get ear infections? How long has this been going on? Your child's age and are there other risk factors? And how does it affect your child's hearing? 
the type of ear infection would affect how this is treated. Not all ear infections would need antibiotics because most middle ear infections clear on their own and your doctor might just prescribe pain medications without giving antibiotics. Antibiotics are not routinely given because for one, it would not help if the virus is cause of the ear infection. It would not clear up middle ear fluid and it can cause side effects on your child. Also, overuse of antibiotics can lead to resistant bacteria which are difficult to treat. If your doctor determines that your child would need antibiotics, usually a 10-day course of antibiotics is given. For older kids with less severe um, symptoms, well, they can be given a 5-7 to seven day course of antibiotics. Now, if your child has recurrent ear infections, uh, already has hearing loss or speech delay, then your doctor might recommend that your child might get ear tube surgery. How can you help your child? Well, with or without antibiotics, you can help ease your child's pain by giving pain medications such as acetaminophen or paracetamol or ibuprofen as often as needed. Your doctor might also give pain relieving eardrops, so you can ask your doctor about it. Can it affect your child's hearing? Well, fluid that builds up in the middle ear can block sounds causing temporary hearing loss. Your child might not respond to soft sounds, might have to increase the volume of the television, uh, might need to talk louder, or might seem to be inattentive in school. What are some ways that you can do to help your child from getting ear infections? Well, you can do some lifestyle choices to help your child. For one, breastfeed your baby for at least six months. This would prevent early episodes of ear infections. For babies who are bottle fed, well, feed your baby at an angle and prevent uh, bottle feeding while lying down. Also, wash your hands often. This is the most effective strategy from preventing infections. And lastly, get your child up to date on all the routine immunizations because some vaccines can prevent ear infections. Now, when should you worry and call the doctor? In some rare cases that the ear infection does not go away, you should let your doctor know about it. If your child has had several repeated ear infections because it can cause uh, complications and also if your child has earache especially if this has been going on with fever and it has been going on for a couple of days then maybe it's time to let your doctor know about it. Hey if you like this video watch my next video where I teach you about other child health problems.